Jersey from a town called uh, Galloway, just outside of Atlantic City. Anyone here ever been to Atlantic City? Ooh. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's fun. Um, <laughs> I was a, before I do what I do now as a full-time musician for 10 years. I'm really excited to be back in Boston. I actually went to Berklee College of Music right up the road. Cool. Yeah. Welcome so, home. Yeah, I love it. Um, so for the last 10 years, I owned a recording studio. I gigged. I taught. Um, kids how to play music, and I taught guitar, bass, and drums, I went to school for drums, and I was a music therapist at a nursing home, which was the best job, um, but it was a lot of scrounging, I was working these pretty crazy long hours, and not making any money, and that got old, so I uh, kind of, by chance, started learning WordPress, and I ended up getting really obsessed with it, so fast forward, fast forward a little bit, and I worked for Automatic, and I'm a happiness engineer, at WooCommerce. So essentially what that means is I try to figure out what's wrong with WooCommerce sites. Someone will write in either through live chat or through our through email. And they just say that this is broken. <laughs> and I have to figure out why. So it's it's a technical troubleshooting pretty much all day and I absolutely love it. And since Automatic is a completely distributed company, I can work from wherever I want to as long as there's internet. So I recently moved down to uh, Marshall, North Carolina, just north of Asheville. It's great. I live in the mountains and I can take pictures and hike. And if you have questions about any of this or just want to talk, I'm at the WooCommerce Jetpack downstairs. So I'll say hi. So first let's talk about why you'd want recurring payments over a one-time purchase. Um, first of all, it's been working really well for a lot of big companies for a long time, but especially in the last few years, we've seen a boom in these types of recurring services. I mean, think about Spotify, Netflix, Dollar Shave Club, and all those like single meal box subscriptions could basically be popping up everywhere. Like, does anyone here not have a subscription that they pay for? There's one. You don't have Netflix? No, but someone in your family has Netflix, and you still use that, right? <laughs> yeah. So some perks are typically it's a little bit more uh, predictable a revenue stream as a business owner. Um, a lot of customers consider subscription billing to be more suitable for them because they can choose the plan they want based on their needs. Okay, It's a little more a la carte with these plans. They can upgrade or downgrade their subscription or cancel the subscription if the service doesn't match, match their expectations. So it's giving a little, a little bit of power to the customer. Okay. And a one-time payment system is cheaper, but it's upfront costs. A lot of times are too much for a lot of people. So a monthly subscription allows customers to use your service through less scary methods. Personally, I'd rather pay $10 a month than $120 at once. So what's needed? First, WooCommerce. Okay, For those of you who aren't familiar with WooCommerce, it's free to use completely. It's free to download. You will never charge for a transaction. There's nothing scary or hidden about it. Um, having said that, you do need a payment gateway. right? So that would be Stripe or PayPal. They're the credit card processor of your site. And those payment rate gateways will always take some sort of money. Just like um, if you own a brick and mortar shop, they're still going to take a little percentage off the top. That's how they work. You're going to need a paid WooCommerce plugin called Subscriptions. And depending on your application, uh, a extension called Memberships as well. But for now, we're just going to talk about Subscriptions. And we'll get to Memberships in a little bit. So Subscriptions is developed by a really cool company called Crosspress. And if you haven't looked into it, I highly suggest it. And Prospects is a great company, and their support is phenomenal. <coughs> Before we get talking about subscriptions, we need to go half a step back and mention these payment gateways again. Payment gateways, like I said, are the credit card processors, but not all of them are created equal. The payment gateway needs to have subscription integration specifically built into the plugin. So that means even if the gateway supports recurring payments on its own, it may not support subscriptions. 
All right? And that's important to understand because we see a lot of people who say, well, I have this pain in gateway. Well, it might not work with subscriptions. So some of the more well-known ones are Stripe, First Data, Authorized.net SIM, and PayPal Express Checkout. As of now, there are about 25 official supported ones. Um, having said that, Prosperous has some pretty great uh, documentation for developers to add subscriptions integration to an existing plugin. So if you, were, if you or your client is really stuck in a certain payment gateway, you can add that subscriptions integration into their payment gateway. And as a personal side note, I think it's really important to have multiple payment gateways on your site. Um, some customers don't want to use anything but PayPal, for example, while others, like myself, be completely turned off by the idea of having to create a PayPal account, which they force you to do now, like no matter what. Even if you're just using your credit card, you have to use a PayPal account. So... Well, you have to because it's a subscription. Um, Not for full payments. I don't think you have to for a full payment. On the WooCommerce PayPal extensions that I just tested this morning, they do. <laughs> yes, so I'm not... Again, that's, so that's why we want to have Stripe up there, too. Um, so it's great to let the payment, or let the customers decide what they want to pay, or how they want to pay. Also, I seemingly get to my credit card number stolen like all the time, and so I always end up changing if I'm paying. Um, there is a document, but it has a very long URL, I'll just give it to you later, of what payment gateways are supported by subscriptions. So we're going to go over briefly how to set up WooCommerce subscriptions. It gets a little tedious, I will admit, but we see a lot of people getting some basic things really wrong. Um, so you install subscriptions like any other WordPress plugin. Nothing scary there. So after you install subscriptions, there's going to be two new product types. There's a simple, simple and variable subscription. And these are similar to WooCommerce Core's simple and variable products. And a simple subscription is just that, and we're going to talk about this in a second. And a variable product or subscription is a product type in WooCommerce that lets you set variations <coughs> on a product with control over prices, stock, image, and other things, dimensions, for each variation. So this, think about this uh, simply, they can be used for something like a shirt, where you offer small, large, medium, and green, red, and blue. So that would be a variable product, so you don't have to have nine different products or whatever. <clears throat> so this is what the simple subscription screen looks like in WooCommerce. And as you can see, it's very similar to the simple product screen. Um, note that these can be, these subscriptions can be virtual and downloadable. If it's virtual, it means that it won't be shipped, and that shipping tab on the left will go away, just like your normal uh, simple product. If it's downloadable, it means that there's a downloadable file attached to the product. So we have the subscription price and how often it renews. And it's actually really important to know the flexibility available for these schedules. So out of the box, subscriptions allows the following schedules. Every, every second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, day, week, month, or year. Okay. So having a subscription that re renews every five days or once every two years or any combination of those numbers is completely possible. The expire after field allows you to end a subscription after a current predetermined amount of time. So any though the subscription will have a maximum length. And once that expires, the subscription is no longer active and the <coughs> customer will have to repurchase. Subscriptions that have never expired set into that field, but it is up there. Um, we'll just keep renewing as long as the payments are successful, like Spotify. Uh, sign up fee is pretty self-explanatory, um, but one thing that's great about the subscriptions is the free trial, and it's important to know that this will get added to the total length of the subscription if it expires. So, for example, if you create a subscription of five dollars per month for six months, okay, and that's a subscription length, and, after, and with a one-month free trial. The subscription will expire after a total of seven months. Okay. So I think this is such a good way to get people like hooked onto your products. Um, because if they can cancel any time, there's it's a free trial, they have nothing to lose. Like let's say a free month for a monthly subscription. I feel like they're more willing to sign up 
Again, because they have the control. They can cancel whenever they want. On a personal note, that's actually how we did get started with Amazon Prime and with Spotify. Um, like once I had the free trials, I was completely hooked in. Actually, that's that's not even true. I forgot that I signed up for Amazon Prime. <laughs> and it's been like four years now, but I just use it, so it's whatever. <laughs> um, so you can also, from the screen, set the schedule sales and, and things like that. And here's what a simple subscription will look like on the front end. So this is using um, WooCommerce default storefront view. Now it's not the prettiest in the world. It's very simple. But what I like about storefront is that it's fast, it's unbelievably stable with WooCommerce. It's very easy to customize, and it's free. So that's even better. Um, here's what it look like if you actually did like the add in the free trial and the sign up fee and all that jazz. Okay. So of course this can be customized your liking, and depending on your theme, it may show this differently. Um, but again, this is default behavior using subscriptions and so forth. Okay. So since variable subscriptions in WooCommerce are similar to Core's variable products, all the subscription information is set at the variation level. So first, we're going to need to add attributes to the subscription. So in this case, um, I like doing this. This is for like a uh, <coughs> recurring donation for a nonprofit, let's say. In this case, we're going to do a subscription that has a variable renewal frequency. Okay? So this will allow the customer to select how often they want to pay. So we're going to do one month, six month, and yearly. We need to make sure that they're visible on the product page and they're used for variations. And once we do that, we're going to create variations from these attributes. So now, in essence, we have three different subscription products. So I want to have the cost of the subscription to be $20 a month, $100 for six months, or $200 a year. So that will give like the yearly subscribers a nice little discount. And here's what it looks like editing these variations. So right now I'm editing the monthly recurring subscription. And clicking on those arrows will allow me to edit the biannual or yearly subscription. And this is how it looks for the customer on the front end. Of course, clicking on the renewal frequency drop down will change the price. It's also important to note that you can have multiple variations for subscription products as well. Um, but for the sake of time, I'm trying to make this as simple as possible. Subscriptions is insanely, like, the amount of uh, possibilities you have with this extension is very impressive. So, this is, we're going bare bones today. Um, remember, if you add on things like sign up fees or free trials, they'll also show on this product page. So, here's what it'll look like in the cart for your customer. Again, using storefront. Um, it tells them what's due today and when the first renewal is happening. And now, what if after this subscription is purchased, they're going to have a nice new subscriptions area in their My Account page. So, again, it's important to note that the customers have the power. They can change their payment method cancel their subscription at any time. They can change the re, uh, payment, I'm sorry, the recurring frequency, recurring frequency, I hope you know what I mean. And we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> um, and I feel like when the customers have the power, it inspires a little more confidence in the product and the company they're doing business with, or the organization in this case. On the admin side, there's a few new things that are worth mentioning. Um, so heading to WooCommerce subscriptions from your dashboard will bring you to this page. So we can see the status of the subscription, the subscription number, and the customer name, what they purchased, and the details of their payment schedule. Um, so what's great about this is you have the same functionality like as the WooCommerce core bulk editor too. And when dealing with these subscriptions, you can search by like payment methods. or just seeing people who have paid by Stripe or PayPal or First Data, whatever. And searching for a product or for a customer. It's, um, I have a lot of control over this one screen. Okay. 
here's the subscription detail page. As you can see, again, very similar to WooCommerce Core's order detail. So we have the customer subscription status. And I don't think this user gave us the real address or email address, but I guess we won't know. Um, it tells us the payment method. This here we can also apply coupons after the fact, um, shipping details if there's anything to be shipped. Um, and while you can do the no normal WooCommerce order details functions like resending a customer email or regenerating downloadable permissions or anything like that, you also alter the status of the subscription and change it to on hold, cancel, expire, all that. But this area I think is really, really useful. This is where the admin can alter the billing schedule. And it, it lets you manually change the parameters of a subscription. Now to be honest, I mostly love this feature just for the sake of customer service. Um, so in this, I didn't explain this, uh, let's say someone, we saw that guy, that guy named Tyree Spaghetti, and he ordered a a subscription of meatball pizza bowls, okay, delivered to his house, guaranteed not fresh. But he wasn't satisfied with his last order. And he contacts me complaining about his meatball pizza bowls. So using this function, I can, I can add just a random free month to the trial. Or, uh, sorry, a free month to the subscription. I can extend his subscription for an extra month. And just to tease him, bless you, and to make sure that you don't lose a customer, everybody's happy, okay? So, new email types, um, we have a lot of new ones that go into when adding new commerce subscriptions. All of these can be customized and extended using a plugin, like follow-up emails or something like that. We'll get to that in a minute, we'll get some more. So there are four new coupon types that come with subscriptions as well. Sign up fee discount, sign up fee percentage discount, and same with recurring products. And you know who loves coupons? Like literally everyone. <laughs> so I think it's such a great way to, re to reward loyal customers and introduce new ones to your products. Just for a side note, we just said, WooCommerce has had our 10 year anniversary like last week we gave out these 10 years of Woo coupons, and it was like one of our highest sales um, ever for WooCommerce. So we were really excited about that. People love coupons. Let's give them out. <laughs> um, I think uh, it's also such a great way for your customers to upgrade their subscriptions. And when we talk about upgrades and downgrades, WooCommerce subscriptions actually calls it switching. Okay, I don't know why they don't call it upgrade or downgrade. I didn't write the plugin. So heading to WooCommerce settings subscriptions, we'll see like a cornucopia of new settings, but this little area called switching is particularly important. As it says, switching will allow your subscribers to upgrade or downgrade between different subscriptions. And I know this is a little tedious, but I am going to go through these settings because everyone gets them wrong all the time. So I wanted to try to avoid these downfalls and then everybody contacting support. <laughs> so allow switching has four options. Um, switch from one subscription variation to another within the same variable subscription. So if it's a variable subscription, like our re recurring donation from earlier, this will allow a customer to go from one plan to another without the need to cancel or re-sign up. Switch from a subscription in a group product to any sub simple, simple subscription within that group product. My goodness, that's a mouthful. And this, but this involves a WooCommerce extension called Group Products. And again, for the sake of time, we're just going to ignore that. Um, and switch between both of the above and never. So if you just want to allow your customers to switch between subscription levels, just keep it on switch between both of the above. If you want to keep things just on the simple side, switch from one script subscription variation to another within the same category. Uh, prorate recurring payments. And you, you may opt to have subscriptions charge 
or credit the customer for the difference between two subscriptions when they choose a subscription with a different recurring or payment billing period. And then the prorating of the sign-up fee. So, you can choose to charge the full sign-up fee whenever switching a new subscription, meaning a customer receives no credit for any sign-up fee paid on the current subscription. <clears throat> so this is actually useful when the sign-up fee is to use to cover something physical, like uh, if you're shipping an item for a new subscription, something like that. Um, finally, you can choose to charge a customer the difference between two sign-up fees when switching the new subscription. So if you choose to always prorate the sign-up fee, then they are only charged the difference between the two sign-up when switching to a new subscription with a sign-up fee higher than the one paid for the current subscription. Pro's subscription length, similar. So let's do for an example. Let's say a customer signed up for a 12-month subscription four months ago. So four payments have been completed. The customer now wants to upgrade to a different subscription that also has a length of 12 months. If the store is configured to pro-rate pro length the new subscription will only charge eight additional payments, one month apart before expiring. Okay. And the switch text, I'm sorry, the switch button text is what shows in the user's my subscription page. It will now show this handy little button, upgrade or downgrade. It's very simple, and again, we can customize that text. We're going to briefly talk about another WooCommerce extension called Memberships. Okay. And good news, you don't have to hear me say prorate anymore. Um, memberships is, is developed by a company called Skyverge. It is a, another paid extension. Um, and there's a few, um, as a side note, there are a few extensions that do similar things as WooCommerce, I'm sorry, not as WooCommerce, as subscriptions and memberships. Um, but I like these, they're tried and true. And what I look for when recommending plugins or extensions is how often they're the cause of an issue. And it seems like these are very rarely the actual cause of issues. And I know that their support of Skyverge and Crosspress are both really great, very hands-on, and fast. So I, but again, there's, I know there's other membership plugins, I'm not saying. Putting in my two cents here. So why memberships is needed? Depending on your situation, depending on what you're trying, trying to achieve, it very well may not be. Um, so if you're just looking for a way to charge recurring payments using WooCommerce, you don't need memberships. But in short, memberships allows you to restrict content on your site and assign things like discounts based on membership levels or plans that you create. Now there's, again, a lot of user role-based pricing restriction plugins out there. So why memberships? So here's a comparison of memberships against groups for, for WordPress with the WooCommerce add-on. Now I actually recommend groups a lot. I think it's a great plugin. But for its integration with subscriptions, Memberships um, has us a lot more options. So there's so many more features that are hugely beneficial when using my memberships. And um, some of the ones that really stand out to me is the ability to grant access to an area of the site at user res registration. So as soon as someone registers, you, they can have access to restricted content on the site. Remember all those new email types that were created when we installed subscriptions? There's going to be new ones that come with memberships too. So keeping the administrators and the customers in the loop as to what's going on. Um, another one is allowing for length-based memberships. So in other words, their memberships can expire. And the amount of control what you have, I'm sorry, the amount of control that you have over what gets restricted in memberships. So it can be a post, a category tag, product category, individual page product pretty much anything. Um, you can restrict just the purchasing of certain products while still allowing your public to see it. 
And this is great for something like business to business. Um, if you want to show products, but you want to hide the pricing, unless you're <coughs> signed in as a member. Um, so, or you could do wholesale tiers. Um, so depending on your membership level, you'll get different pricing. And a huge thing that is not listed on here, because there was actually another thing, but I, didn't, I wanted to fit all on one page, is that memberships have the ability to import and export member lists via CSV. Um, so you can import them into MailChimp, whatever your email marketing uh, platform is. And that's a huge one. So, memberships and subscriptions integration. In essence, memberships allows you to restrict content based on, subs on subscription. Okay? So what does this exactly mean? Remember that subscriptions really only enables recurring billing on your WooCommerce site. It does not restrict content. So when teamed up with subscriptions, um, you can grant access to areas of your site based on a customer's subscription level. You can allow access to different areas, different products, custom taxonomies, whatever, depending on membership level. And those memberships will have that recurring billing support of subscriptions. Um, another big thing with this for uh, memberships in particular is it's able to use a free trial period when tied to a subscription product. And if the subscription uses a free trial, you can decide whether content should be included in that trial period or not. All that subscription swishing we were talking about. Memberships also supports that upgrade or downgrade of memberships and subscription plans. So when a subscription that is switched or suspended from your customer's My Account page, the membership will also be switched that's tied along to it. And very briefly, very briefly, I'm just going to show you how this is done. So we're going to create a new membership plan. In this case, it's only for customers who purchase that Meatball Pizza Bowl subscription. So, slug. So granting access upon, access upon product purchase, Meatball Pizza Bowl, that's a subscription. And it's going to be tied to the subscription money. On a side note, has anyone actually had a Meatball Pizza Bowl before? I wish. It, it's from Olive Garden. Oh. Hold on. <laughs> and I haven't had one, but I really want to. I mean, you know what's in it. I don't have to describe the ingredients. It's a meatball pizza bowl. Um, but I've never met anyone who's actually had one. <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying anything. Why is that? I don't know. I just want to know also why they created it in the first, first place. Like, they went to KFC and found, like, they saw the bowl that KFC does, and they're like, yep, we're doing that. Well, Domino's hasn't done it yet? Yeah. Uh, oh, well. All right. In the restrict content tab, I've added a restriction rule. So in this case, I only want customers who have the super fan membership, which is, remember, tied to that meatball pizza bowl, bowl subscription, to be able to access a particular page on my site called super fans only. So when you add a restriction rule for content, it will no longer be public on your site. So by adding a rule for any page post, post taxonomy, it will be restricted and only can be accessed by members of this plan or members of another plan that grant, specifically grant access to the product. So of course I can add other rules. Um, sorry about that. Like, uh, like restricting products to be only seen or purchased by customers who have this membership or a big one is actually the ability to add different pricing tiers for different membership and subscription levels. So let's say like for $5 a month, you see this pricing. For, if you pay $10 a month, you see a different pricing. Um, but again, for the sake of time, I am going to admit all of that. I keep things simple. Once a membership is purchased, the customer will have a new set of options in their My Account page. So this is the new memberships 
from here your customers will be able to manage and see the details of the membership, um, like seeing what content or products have been unlocked for them, as well as any product discounts. So when tied to a subscription, like this one, the manage section will also allow you, your users to see the, cost, the details of that subscription. So let's take a look at that page, that super fans only page, what it will look like for users, customers who aren't members of the subscription. In this case, I've configured memberships to show a message on restricted pages. Now, you can also opt to completely hide the page. And by completely, I mean it will 404. It will not show up in search engines. It will not show up if you search your website. It will not be indexed. So if you really want to hide content behind uh, memberships or subscriptions, that's the way to do it. In this case, I, you can also set up a redirect. So um, looks like you aren't a fan of this. If you try to go to this restricted page, it's actually going to put you into the subscription tied to it. But since we do have that sub subscription, we're able to see the content, which are the meatball pizza bowls. <laughs> Look at that. That's a real thing. The world we live in, right? On the admin side, you can see there's a lot of new information for members, including what parent and subscription numbers are associated with the membership. Um, and this is a miscellaneous side note. For those of you who don't know, um, if you look at the order on subscription numbers for this membership, they're order 90 and subscription number 91. So it's something to remember about how WordPress works. Everything is essentially a different post, right? So if a subscription number, and, uh, I'm sorry, so a subscription number and an order number cannot be the same. Um, they're, the, uh, they're two separate posts. Uh, another example, like let's say I just received an order and it was order number 10. And in the meantime, I publish a couple new products and I put a new page up, the next order I get will not be order number 11, right? Because those new those types. So if this does bother you, if this is just a way, this is just how uh, WordPress and WooCommerce core work. If this does bother you, there are ex extensions you can do to get like sequential order numbers because it's sometimes tricky with accounting and stuff like that. Just a little FYI. So before I finish, um, <laughs> bye. Um, before I finish, I want to take a minute about talk about like a couple cool ways to extend the functionality of subscriptions and memberships. Um, there's an extension that I really like called WooCommerce Subscription Downloads. It's actually developed by us at WooCommerce, and it allows you to associate downloadable products with an existing subscription. One of the best ones out there is called Subscribe All the Things. Um, it's developed and maintain, maintained as a collaboration between Prospress and Somewhere Warm. What's great about it, number one, it's free. And it allows you to add subscription options to non-subscription product types. So, such as like simple and variable products. Um, additionally, this plugin can be used to add subscription options to product bundles, composite products, the mix and match products offer options for subscribing to an entire cart before checking out, and switch any product from a one-time purchase to a subscription, even this has been added to a cart. So think about it as uh, the subscribe and save on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Same thing. And that's free as long as, we, it's, uh, as, long as you have a subscription. Um, there's Teams for WooCommerce memberships, also <coughs> developed by Skyverge. This is a paid extension. And that takes the memberships created in WooCommerce and gives you the ability to sell them to teams or companies or groups and families instead of individuals. So essentially you sell memberships on a team basis or per person basis. So you can buy five memberships and you put in their email addresses and all five of them will have access to your content and all that. Okay. And finally, um, I did bring this up earlier. It's called follow-ups or follow-up emails. It's developed by us at WooCommerce. And it's a full-on email marketing. And you can send things like abandoned cart emails, specific emails to customers who only purchase certain products or from a certain category. And this has so many triggers, it's insanely robust. But in this case, 
I like it because of the subscription specific triggers. Um, you can email a customer after a renewal, renewal order has been created or before the next automatic payment, and that works for manual renewals as well, um, before active subscription expires, and a ton more. So this kind of goes hand in hand with subscriptions, and I think it's a really great product. And that is it. I would love to answer any questions if I can. And if I don't know the answer, I will say I don't know, and I will find out for you. <laughs> yes? What is the best way to test that once you've set everything up? Just to double check that. Um, your stuff's in line. Did you mention subscriptions and yeah. memberships kind of together? Yeah, yeah, so what I would do is... Can you repeat the question? Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, he was saying what's the best way to test all this, because there are some integrations. Um, first of all, I'd set it up on either state, or you can do it on your website, I don't care. <laughs> Just make sure you have a uh, um, payment gateway in test mode, so you're not using any real money. And then once you do that, just set up a, something simple, like a, a membership that renews every single day. And for some brand new app, some brand new customer user that you've just created. And then just go from there. That's really the, the simplest way. That's what I would do. Uh, yes? Did follow-ups work with just WooCommerce? Yes. Follow-ups is only for WooCommerce. Without the subscription? No, no. I'm sorry. It works It works for WooCommerce, subscriptions, memberships. Um, it has tons of triggers, and you can create your own custom triggers in there, too. So anything relating with WooCommerce, the follow So that could replace are. Jilt or Clavio? I'm, I can't say it will replace them, but it certainly has similar functionality. Cool. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. Um, this is probably uh, more about the WooCommerce uh, with the job board uh, plugin, and you guys also are the company that um, it's offered. The, um, if you combine both of those, you know if you can do something like, um, let's say you're a um, happiness engineer mm -hmm. and you're at WooCommerce, and you want to work, you want to look out there and see other, uh, see about other happiness engineer positions, mm -hmm. but you don't want your supervisor. So you're both, you and your supervisor, you're, you're a candidate applying to the job board, and your supervisor's looking for more people like you uh -huh. to fill your position, but you don't want your supervisor to see you. So I'm thinking of the groups take care of that, and you know if the functionality is in there, or would that be a, an add-on? Um, in that case, so essentially, I'm, I'm going to repeat also for me. Yeah. Let's say we're going to, I'm looking at a job board, yeah. My boss can also see, and I'm looking for new jobs, but someone else is trying to look at. So, so you're. Let me describe a little better. Oh, I'm sorry. You're at the, no. I, 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 you're you're at WooCommerce, yes. and maybe you're looking at a position. Mm -hmm. You're looking out there. Mm -hmm. So you posted your resume for mm -hmm. others to look at who mm -hmm. are looking for happiness engineers. Mm -hmm. So these managers or these supervisors, these hiring officials, are looking for people like you. And your boss is looking for people like you because you guys are always growing. But you don't want your boss to see yours. So, like, what I would say is there'd be a limit for anybody in your organization who can't see your resume. Wow. <laughs> it sounds like it, I feel like it's a custom. That I mean, I mean, but I didn't know you knew other stuff. Off the top of my head, no. I feel like if if. If you got really creative with custom user roles, yeah. you might be able to achieve be able to achieve something. But, yeah, I, was, but I don't know off the top of my head. I was trying to think of that as you were showing some of the modifications. Yeah, I'm not sure off the top of my head. That's a very, very specific and yeah. that's a great question though. So I don't know. But I can come downstairs and okay. okay. see if I can find something else. Uh, yeah. Can you just give an example of uh, how you would use the, the team membership? Sure. So we'll give an example of how to use Teams for memberships. Um, so let's say I'm on a membership page, and I want to have uh, five people. Uh, I'm sorry. And, I, and you purchase five memberships. If you're using Teams for uh, memberships, what that's going to do is going to bring up a bring up fields. So you're going to put in information for those five people in those fields. So now those five people are going to have access to that membership plan, 
as opposed to just one person and tr going through and buying it five times, essentially. So it's, it's just it's making the process easier when you're dealing with multiple memberships. Right? Um, like for, in the Yeah, so, yeah, let's say, yeah, exactly. Let's say, like, oh, I'm buying, let's say I'm selling business classes on my website. And your your company, which comprises of 15 people, is going to buy my business class. Okay? We want to give all of them access to the products and to all this hidden content. So that's why you use something, something like Teams for numbers. And you pay 15 times. Yes. Or some discount. Or some discount, yeah. So I am out of time. Uh, if you have any more questions about anything, and when we talk meatball pizza bowls, I'll be downstairs, okay? Thank you guys very much.